Next question is from Drew Mosier. What are your fitness trend predictions for 2021? Oh, I got yeah. one. Oh, go for it. Yeah, I got one. That's you know, I, normally I think when we think of the fitness trends, we think of like this, this you know bullshit thing that's going to happen. I have a positive one that I think is going to be a, a good fitness trend this year. I think the movement of you know doing things like as far as fitness related, this idea of like you have to go to a gym and get a workout in and have a membership and sweat, you know, in this you know, on a treadmill. And I, I think that's going to slowly go away and more and more people will find uh, more creative ways to get in shape, you know, mm -hmm. and start training at home. And I think more, I, I think it's obvious that the uh, home gym surge of like equipment is like through the roof, right? In the it's last, gonna keep going. I think so too. Yeah. And I think more and more people are actually having, and this is including myself, so this is the longest I've ever been and not been in a gym in almost in almost 20 years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have never gone this long. Yeah, you were not a home gym person. No, I was out of the three of us. I was the one who like, was, eh, I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously because of the time that we're in, I was forced to make it work and figure it out and have now learned to love some of the benefits of that as much as I didn't like it before and said, oh, I love it. And, and I'm not saying that I still wouldn't enjoy getting a lift where there's a bunch of other, you know, people pushing weight and doing things in the gym atmosphere. But I've actually learned to love the at-home workout so much more that I can't be alone in that in that camp where you probably love the gym setting before, you were forced out of it, you've now been forced into figuring out what at-home workouts look like for you and have now adjusted and have learned to like it. And so, and now I'm looking at 2021 going like, shit, I'm going to cancel my four gym memberships and save my 200 and something dollars or probably $300 a month. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna continue doing this at home. I think that that's gonna be a big trend this year. Yeah, mm. I I agree with you 100. percent I think uh, home gym sales. I think uh, digital fitness yeah. uh, products and yep. programs. I think those are gonna continue to do well. I think also that the demand uh, for fitness is going to go up. We saw it dip, right? Gyms closed, people freaking out, eating more crappy food, That's another good call. drinking more alcohol. I think that we're, this is my own just, you know, belief. I think that we're going to start to reach a breaking point where a lot of people are like, okay, I need to do something to take well, care of myself. And I think you're going to see that more this year than you have in previous how years. How can we not yeah. when you connect all the COVID stuff? Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you look at the, the like the number one cause of fatality from COVID, it's people that are obese, heart conditions, mm -hmm. all the things that are preventative if we are dieting and training. So I th you got to think that there's a big portion of people that are probably waking up. I know there's a, there's a, a large part, portion of people that are like locking themselves in their home and not going anywhere and not getting sunlight, not socializing, not doing that in fear of COVID. Then I think there's another big portion of people that realize like, oh shit, like one of the best things that I can do to prevent this or at least mitigate it if it does come my way is to be healthy. I think well, that's human behavior because look at it this way. Uh, there, I, I have friends that, that uh, have served time in prison and the time that they were most consistent with their workout was in prison. Why? You have it, some sketchy friends. It's yeah, a few, <laughs> a few. But it's because why? Because they were in a situation. They it was a stress relief. They they didn't have a lot of options available to them, and they became consistent with their work. I feel like we're hitting a breaking point. I really do. Yeah. I think a lot of people are the demand for fitness is going to increase because a lot of people are like, all right, that's it. I need to do something. I need to get on a schedule. Things are not open like they normally were. I think uh, it's top of mind. Out. I yeah. think it's top of mind because people, you know, they. I think it's both like it's it's sort of the other end of the sword of that is that it's bringing people back to wanting to get into healthier habits and, and, and protect themselves and build, you know, a more resilient body. And I, I, I don't know if it's been announced or not. I know uh, Apple's working on, you know, ways to compete with Peloton and all these kind of digital like platforms and things. But I really see, you know, we're going to see some some of these big companies jump in to the ring here and create experiences like we haven't seen before where it's going to connect to the watch and like you're going to get points for all this and all these things like they've speculated about forever in the digital health space i think are like and they're going to double triple down on them to where mm. you know you could earn points and then that goes to your insurance and you know things like that oh, it yeah. can, can lower costs for things like there's going to be incentives i think within oh, workplaces cool. and stuff i think it's like finally time where that makes sense excellent